general goes to war. The general, Joseph Mobutu, commander of the Congolese army, here leaving Leopoldville, capital of the Congo, to see his troops in action. His destination, Kikwit, chief town in Kwilu province. For it's here that the Congo is once again being torn by civil war. This time, a revolt against the central government by left-wing rebels supported by communist China. In the bush of Kwilu province, local tribesmen are supporting 15,000 guerrilla troops. On his way to the war zone, General Mobutu, back on duty after a month's leave, discusses the situation with a Belgian military advisor. The seriousness of the Kwilu revolt has only just been admitted by the Congolese government. Until three weeks ago, they played it down. Now they see it as a bid to set a pro-communist regime in the Congo, in the heart of Africa. But Mobutu's men in Kwilu face a hard task. There's only 1,500 of them to hunt for guerrillas in an area half as big as Belgium. Mobutu will find it hard to spare many more men. His total army strength of 30,000 is already fully stretched, keeping the peace in a country nearly the size of Western Europe. Another problem. From the end of June, Mobutu won't be able to call on help from the United Nations force. Its 5,000 men are finally being withdrawn. But even in the interval, Mobutu is unlikely to ask the UN to intervene actively. He wants to prove that the Congolese army can win its own battles. But if it can't, the Congo's future will indeed be grim. The Quilu rebels are virtually a bow and arrow army, but they're well organized. Their leader, Pierre Muleli, was trained in guerrilla warfare in communist China. His revolt may well be a major move in Peking's drive to gain Africa for Chinese-style communism. Mulele's men call themselves the Jeunesse, it means youth. These are some of the 300 rebels being held captive in Kikwit town. Missionaries who've been attacked say the Jeunesse go into battle crazed with hemp, showering dirt over themselves in the belief it will protect them from bullets. Their communism is primitive enough. They say it will give them everything the white man has. The few rifles they possess are crudely made. They mostly use bows and arrows. On his visit to Kikwit, General Mobutu tested a rebel bow and arrow. A poisoned arrow killed his own chief of staff four weeks ago. One of the bloodiest battles so far was fought at Idiofa, 60 miles east of Kikwit. 